This is the Rave Bullet GT e-bike. They sent it to me to review. If you want one, there's a link in the description to all the information about this bike. I'm loving it, and so are the ladies on the bike path. Oh, oh thanks. <laughs> But let's go back to the start. If you order one of these things, a five foot long box will show up in your driveway. It's got grab handles so you can lift it into the house. And once you open it up, you see that it is very well packaged and everything is really well protected. There's a box and there's a bag of tools inside of the box. I opened the front of the box to create kind of a mat to assemble it. And you can see how well it's packaged here. You're gonna need some big fat scissors and be careful not to scratch the paint or do any damage with your big fat scissors because there are a ton of zip ties. And you start out with the handlebars. So there's four bolts that hold the handlebars on. You remove all four of those. And that is the front plate that holds it on. And then you put the handlebars in place, choosing the position that you like, whether you want them more forward or more backwards. I, I tend to like them leaned back and then make sure that you get them centered properly before you torque it down. Then when you torque it down, you do it in a crisscross pattern, top left, top right, top right, bottom left. And then it's time for the wheel to go on. You'll find a nut and a washer in the tool bag. The nut and washer both go outside of the fork leg. And then you lift your bike up into the air. I found that standing over it was probably the safest way to not drop it since I didn't have anybody to help me. Make sure the nut and washer are towards the outside on both sides of the wheel and then center it over the disc and the plastic cap over here for shipment was covering the nut on one side and so i just put that plastic cap on to make it look good and then make sure it spins and stops and doesn't make any noise and then you're good the pedals are labeled left and right for a reason the threads are opposite direction so on the right side they go in clockwise and then on the left side they go in counterclockwise. So you can see it looks like I'm unscrewing it, but they actually screw down. That's just standard bike pedal and the tool that they give you with the kit works. The headlight goes on with two bolts on either side. And there is a cord that you put out of the bottom, not the top. So the cord comes out of the bottom, use the two bolts, one on one side, one on the other side to hold the headlight in place. And then it's pretty obvious where you plug it in there in the red spot. The only thing is you want to mount it over the forks not under the forks and then there's a bolt that holds the fender on put that in to put your fender on and boom you're ready to ride except that you got to charge your battery so the battery charger hole is on this side of the battery and it's going to be red for a while this is also ul listed that's important because there are some states like new york city where people are burning their houses down with not ul listed chargers so some states it's going to be illegal to buy or have bikes that aren't UL listed. So now let's take a look at this beautiful thing out on the beach and look at all the features. First of all, I like the design very much. It looks like a little mini motorcycle. I like the way that the, the battery is in the middle of the frame like an engine would be on a motorcycle. Um, it's got this gigantic headlight that's very effective. We'll do a test of that later on when it gets dark. The fork has 60 millimeters of travel and it is somewhat adjustable. So there is a setting for compression. You can turn it all the way one way to lock it out and then the other way to make it more bouncy. And then it also has a preload adjuster. So that gives you more spring tension. So if you want it more bouncy, you turn it counterclockwise. And if you want it firmer, you turn it clockwise. And on the top of the frame where you'd find a gas tank on a motorcycle, there's two bolts holding a plastic thing in place. And you can see they, there's a metal plate underneath it. So if the guys at Rave are listening, it would be pretty awesome if there was a gas tank shaped storage tank that you could bolt onto this bike to make it really look like a little motorcycle. That would be awesome. Here's a crude prototype I built to show what that would look like. The battery is 48 volts, 20 amp hours with 21750E Samsung cells inside of it. It locks onto the bike and there's an option of a second battery that gives you eight more amp hours that looks like this. And if you opt for the model that I have that doesn't have the second battery, there is an option to add it later on if you want to buy one. And you've got one gear in the front and then Shimano seven speed unit in the back. I found it was good in top gear up to about 20 miles an hour before I started spinning out of gear. So I think that's good if you're trying to help the bike along at lower speeds. I think it's, it's geared properly. And then the gigantic 20 by 4.0 tires with little knobs on them. So it's mild street knobbies. And those are inflated to 30 PSI. There's a red reflector and a red LED taillight and a plastic fender to keep the water out of your butt crack if it's raining. And then there's a lot of little uh, bolts in the frame for mounting things. So they've obviously put some thought into building luggage racks and giving you 
options for expanding and adding things to your bike. A shock absorber in the back is 1,000 pounds per inch, and I found it a little firm. Well, I'll do some tests with it later and show you everything about that, but it is a pretty standard sized uh, mountain bike shock. And there are a couple more bolts on the swing arm. Not sure what those are for, but they're there if you need them. It has hydraulic brakes with 160 millimeter rotors. This one is a pre-production version, but the actual production versions will have Rave brand brakes on them that are better than these. And the motor is on the rear wheel. It's a 750 watt motor that makes 75 newton meters of torque. And up in the cockpit, you can see you've got a Shimano shifter and you've also got a thumb throttle. So that's your throttle when you're doing throttle only. You use your thumb on that. And then the Shimano shifter is a seven speed. To turn it on, you hold the power button down for two seconds and then the display comes to life. It's a pretty simple, uh, easy to read display and, and easy to use also. The plus moves you up into the power modes. So one, two, three, and then zero is also a mode, which means you do all the work yourself. And then if you hold down the plus sign, that turns on the headlight and the tail light. That tail light isn't flashing, that's just my camera doing that. The seat is comfortable and I think very stylish. A bench seat that was flat would be a lot more practical probably, but I like the way this thing looks. Uh, I rode 30 miles on it, feels great, and it measures 30 inches from the ground, so shorter people can still ride on it. And now it's road test time, so let's get it out on the street and show you how it works and what it can do. So here are the standard modes. Mode number one gets you up to 12 miles an hour on throttle or pedaling. It'll assist up to 12 and then it stops helping you. Mode number two goes up to 16 miles an hour and then it stops helping you. And so on throttle only, you're at 16 miles an hour. Now mode three will go 20 miles an hour on throttle, but if you start pedaling, it'll go up to 28 miles an hour. And then if you really want to get some exercise, put it in mode zero. That's no assist at all. So that's you just pedaling it like a regular bike. My top speed in zero mode was 16 miles an hour. And actually, if you cruise like eight to 10 miles an hour with this thing, it's really not bad at all on regular pedal mode. But I know you're all asking, how do you unlock it and make it go faster? Hold plus and minus at the same time, then hold power and minus, and then you get into a mode. Now you see here, there's the wheel size. I didn't play around with that, but some people set it to a smaller wheel to make it go faster. But I went to L5 here, and in L5, you see the 32 at the bottom is maximum kilometers per hour. And I turned it up to its highest setting. Now it's actually gonna go faster than 40 kilometers per hour. That's just gonna max out the speed when you get on the road. So let's try it out. So throttle only at sea level, or I should say ocean level, because this is the Pacific Ocean. I put the throttle on. I should mention I'm six foot one and 200 pounds. So if you're a skinnier, smaller person, you'd probably accelerate faster than this, but just hanging on to the throttle, it does pretty good up to 25, 26 miles an hour. And then if you hold on, if you're a tall, fat guy, <laughs> I am not aerodynamic at all, but it still grinds its way all the way up to 28 point. Come on, baby. How high can we go? Come on, no whammies. 28.5. And then I went both ways just to compensate for any wind. And both ways, I was able to get it over 28 miles an hour. And then this is the hill climb test. So we're going to run through a bunch of tests, but you can see how steep this hill is just based on the, the angle that car was parked at. So starting out from the beach, given it full throttle, no pedaling, we're going to see just, just if it can climb this steep hill. There are a few flat spots in between the hills. You know, it'll, it'll be steep and it'll be flat and steep and flat, but it did surprisingly well, I thought, especially slowing down for the stop signs and then accelerating again up the hill. It's not happy. <laughs> I feel kind of like an abusive bicycle owner for doing this to it, but uh, there I am having to lose all my momentum to let the little ducklings drive by. And then the final sprint past the, the shiny red car here. We're going to make it all the way up to the street with all the bars on it. So this is really impressive. It's hard, it's called the GoPro effect where you can't really tell how steep a street is from a perspective like this. But trust me, this is a, a brutal hill, especially on a regular bike and we made it. But what if you wanna bomb a hill? So we're starting out on a flat. So you can see in level three pedal assist mode, just how quickly this thing accelerates. So, I'm, so this is a flat section of street and then we're gonna hit a pretty steep hill as we cross through this crosswalk here. So I'm already up to, what is that, 25 miles an hour. <laughs> legs are going crazy now you don't really have to pedal you can just kind of i mean you have to keep the pedals moving but even if you're not helping it's still gonna help you up to 28 miles an hour so going down this hill 
looking for top speed and we hit 36 37 miles an hour bombing a hill on this thing that's the stopping distance from 20 miles an hour i hit the brakes when i went past that orange cone so it stopped great and it corners pretty well also i'm a little nervous to really lay into it because it's got the knobbies on it and i'm not sure how they would do on pavement but you can see in terms of even on the gear side you can really lean it so if you had some street tires oh no it's the mall cop quick guys get out of here and here's a slow motion suspension test going over some potholes you can see the front end really does a good job i got it tuned the way i like it and I'm, I'm happy with the front end the rear end is pretty firm the way it comes set up and you can see when you get airborne you actually want a pretty firm rear shock so if you're into jumping then you're probably going to just leave it the way it is if you want a smoother ride you're probably going to want to uh, take some pressure off of it and then riding in dirt and rocks and gravel it does great i was actually sitting on the seat with my butt here i wasn't standing up and uh it was a smooth ride through the gravel. So it performs well. I think part of that's the fat tires and part of it is the suspension doing its job. Here's a look at the shock. So what you would need to do is just screw that collar upwards a little bit and put less tension on the spring to give yourself a little bit more comfortable ride. Or it's a 200 millimeter shock. So you could find a mountain bike shock that fits it. Maybe some guy on eBay is selling one that he took off a good bike to upgrade. Here's the headlight test, and in especially dark alley, this thing is an absolute flamethrower. So it's it's motorcycle quality headlight. It really lights up the night, so great job on that, guys. And the range, for me, I'm down to one bar after 30.1 miles. Now, this is climbing hills and going off jumps and driving at night with the headlight on, and just my torture test gave me 30 miles off a of charge, which I can live with. I didn't want to run it all the way down and destroy the battery, so I plugged it in when I saw that one bar left over. And in the green corner, weighing in at 84.8 pounds is the Rave e-bike. The battery is 10 pounds, 9.5 ounces of that. So if you're going to try and lift it up and carry it places or put it in a car, you take the battery out, you save 10 pounds. And with the battery removed, it fits nicely onto a two-prong bike rack. It's a little tight where the shock is, but it does fit on there. And then if you want to put it inside your hatchback, this is a Prius. Uh, it fits in there, it takes up most of the space, but it definitely does work. And here are some shots of what it looks like for a person to ride the bike. That's me. I'm six foot one, taking video of myself. And I've recruited this test pilot who's about five foot eight, who's riding the bike around the neighborhood. So I'm just going to swoop around him and take shots of him riding the bike so you get an idea of the ergonomics. And while I'm doing that, I'll mention how much this bike costs. So this is the Rave Bullet Pro that he's riding here. The original uh, base model of this bike has a hardtail suspension, so no rear suspension, and it's $1,399. Uh, the one that you see in the video here with one battery is $1,799, and then if you get the two battery version, it's $2,199. So it's a bargain compared to what a lot of the other manufacturers are selling when you talk about a full suspension, cool little mini bike like this. There's a lot of bikes in this category, and I, I think this is one of the better deals that you can find in it, in my opinion. And of course, there's a link to the website in the description of this video. They've also got a Facebook group where they're interacting with people. And it's kind of been fun to, to look through that and see the various stages of the design process and how they've had to kind of engineer things and redesign things and really try to make the best bike possible. Hey, you old man, get off of my lawn. Look at that cool guy at the beach. He looks so cool on that cool bike. How can I be cool like him? I feel like I'm being influenced. So thanks for the bike, guys. And if you feel influenced, check them out. The link's in the description. Thanks for watching.